Foot Clan, we have a really, really great episode for you today. We are glad you are here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and just enjoy it. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Hey, it's football time. Yes, it is. We're back already. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i not going to complain about it. Uh, nope. Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore. Andy Holloway, it is football time. We've got a Thursday night game. Previewed it yesterday. Mm-hmm. We've got a Thursday night football shellacking on the way. I was going to say, sometimes, we, sometimes we've been surprised. Yes, that is true, especially on Thursday night games. Sometimes we can in, – in the past, Thursday night games, a lot of times they can seem exciting. And then – I'll tell you, right. I'll tell you it, this. And then the game happens, you go, oh, that was, was kind of crappy. I – uh. I, I took a more traditional route to all of my showdown lineups tonight, though. Okay. I didn't. I didn't bet on a surprise. Let's put it that way. I think you're right. I think there could be a shellacking in on the way. I hope not. And that's just because the Giants didn't score for six quarters until the Cardinals executed our the plan we put into yes. place, uh, which was accomplish the number one pick. Yeah, you combine that with losing Saquon. And the San Francisco 49ers defense. It just uh, it doesn't have a rosy outlook, but, you know. And come on, the, Giants, surprise us. The left side of your offensive line. Oh, yeah, they're missing that. <laughs> That's Now, is that where that Bosa guy is? or uh, I, hmm. I imagine they Tonight will. Tonight it will be. <laughs> they, they will figure it out. But uh, lots San to Francisco, talk about. That is. Yeah, they will. And uh, we have, we've got a lot on today's show. Deucers are here. We got backwards cap alley today. Oh, we're backwards hats? Well, Brooks is. The other guys <laughs> it's weren't. It's because he's an American bad boy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I mean, when I think of Brooks, and I uh -huh. think that I think they named him Brooks for the alliteration because bad boy was yeah, coming. Yeah, bad, bad boy, boy Brooks. Brooks. What oh, you going to do? Oh, boy. Is that a pack of smokes rolled up in your sleeve? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> when you think of Brooks... <laughs> You think of bad oh, boys. I wish he was I in enough a, of this. a leather jacket. He's like, can I push the button to leave Deucer's Alley, for goodness sake, uh, so he can hop on his bike and ride off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, we've got stuff going on. Head over to footclangiveaway.com. We're giving away a signed CMC jersey. Big news here, and what better day to announce it. But by popular request, we have created – it's football time. <laughs> and it's football time t-shirt that is available. The shirt. Yes. The shirt. Shopballers.com. <laughs> uh, Andy Schneider, our designer extraordinaire, put up a shirt today. So you can pick up your It's Football Time. I've got two of them on the way already. I have no doubt. Both of them black, Jason? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I need to keep that closet consistent. All right. And you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And you can watch the show on YouTube, YouTube.com slash is it fantasy footballers, Brooks? The. It's the the fantasy footballers. Yeah. He took that out of the dock and you need to put that back in for me. Uh what else do we have going on? We got news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Oh, do we have news? Yes, we do. Cam Akers has been traded to the Minnesota Vikings. It was a sixth round pick swap. No, oh, no I'm sorry. No. It was a sixth, seventh swap. Uh, yeah, but, it, but, but also it, please state the year. Yeah, is is it? It's next year, right? It's 2024. Or did they just push it all the way out to 2025? Keep going. Wait, did they wanted a 2026? A two six seven pick swap. A 2026. Six seven swaps. So congratulations, LA. You did it. You you got something. You got something. <laughs> you got 
<laughs> one pick better than the seventh round three years from now. Um, that is that is crazy. So when you when people are like, hey, the Vikings yeah. traded for Cam Akers, did they? Right. Not really. So I will jump in because I imagine everyone is mm -hmm. waiting for my reaction to Alexander Madison. Boston. Uh, number one, no, it's it's definitely not a positive move for Alexander Madison of Cam Akers coming in. But I do believe that this is a far more of an indictment of like Ty Chandler and the backup running backs. Go back to the uh, preseason, and the Vikings kept saying over and over, we don't know who our second running back is. We know our starter is Madison. Who's number two? And then Ty Chandler, uh, he had himself you know, a, a really big preseason performance, and we all assumed, oh, whoa, okay, clearly Ty Chandler's the number two on this team. And they still didn't immediately say, this is our guy. But Ty, Ty Chandler's not getting on the field. Like That's where it's interesting to me. Of the, of course, the, community, the fantasy football community wants to immediately say, the Vikings have bailed on Alexander Madison. Well, I'm looking at the larger story of this coaching staff had Madison last year. Like They've been around him for an entire season. They gave him the contract knowing that Dalvin Cook is going to walk, saying we are comfortable moving into next year with you as the, the starter. And are they really going to give up on that plan in two games? Maybe. I mean, Alexander Madison has been incredibly inefficient, but he's also not getting opportunities. Is he not getting opportunities because he's inefficient, or is he inefficient because he's not getting opportunities? That's a real chicken or egg thing to me. But... And, but there when I go is he's – yes, he's being inefficient. Why wouldn't you try Ty Chandler out? Like why wouldn't you put a back uh, the backup running back on the field to see what they can do? And they just – they never did it. It's been all Alexander Madison. So that's what leads me to believe that this is more of a replacement for Ty Chandler. But now that Cam Akers is going to be there, over time you have a guy who could – actually take over Madison's job, but I still think it's Madison's job. I don't necessarily agree with that. I uh, Is Madison the one? Sure. I think certainly to start, they're not going to bring Cam Akers into the new system on short notice and throw him ahead of Alexander Madison. Cam Akers is not someone that you could possibly think about starting until after you have witnessed the Vikings make a complete right. shift and changeover. But also, I don't know that Alexander Madison is someone you can really start while you have a competent backup or someone that uh, the, the Vikings are talking up as a very confident backup. You know, their press conference today was talking about how excited they are to have him there, the downfield runner. Uh, you They've know, they also said we have not lost confidence in Alexander Madison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, is so yesterday, ho hopefully this news broke around you uh, before, you know, making the trade, I, I talked about if you're one of those teams that lost multiple running backs and you're just, you've got nobody, maybe go try to trade for Alexander Madison on the cheap. Hopefully you found out this <laughs> news before you pulled the trigger right. on any of that. Because I, right now I'm kind of hands off both of these players. Madison wasn't great on his own and he was playing 75% of snaps. Now I expect him to go to 60% of snaps and not get better. Yeah, I, and again, I, I guess I disagree with Mike. I think this is terrible for Madison. I mean, I think it puts him in the category of, I mean, he needed massive volume to maybe help you. He was one of only two running backs to fail to record a single missed tackle force through two games in the NFL. Minimum 15 attempts. Yeah, and so, I mean, I, I don't think it's a surprise. I mean, they were dead last in EPA per rush. They needed help. They flirted with some guys in the offseason. Um, I don't think you can have any conf. I mean, they, they say they haven't lost confidence in Alexander Madison. I have as a fantasy player because you're looking at him as a, as a volume play. So, I mean, if you think about some other volume situations in the NFL and how would you approach them if Madison was added to those backfields, you know, if, 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 or I'm sorry, if, I'm sorry, if acres was added to Tampa, sure. Would your confidence be decreased in Rashad White? Of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, unquestionably it would be. So, uh, you know, I don't think that you can argue anything that it would be good for Madison. It's just a matter of what do you do with him now? I don't think you can trade him for anything. 
I think running backs are hard to come by. If he was on the waiver wire, you'd pick him up. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things where uh, you're going to have to wait, watch. I think people want to know what to do with Cam Akers. Is Cam Akers going to be a viable player for your roster at some point in time? It's, and it, the odds are probably low there too. Yeah, because they're throwing the ball so much. They're throwing the ball at the highest clip of any team yes, in football. That it's was great. the other point of. I mean, they again. That, are they not running because they can't run, or are they not running because they're just they've been so successful passing the ball? It's both. I mean, it's absolutely both. And so I am def. I'm not saying that this is positive for Alexander Madison. Like. I'm not on that side. I'm like, oh no, he's he's super secure. I just I think it's more of a we got to get another running back in here besides Madison and Ty Chandler is not that guy for this team. So, he, but if he if if Madison's dropping down to sixty percent of the snaps and the play the approach to the offense doesn't change, then it's catastrophic for Madison. Like if you're saying we're going to take our ten rushing attempts and we're going to move those down. Or right. we're going to split those between Madison and Akers, and then and Akers can be out there on on for passing work as well. I say I think Akers is a better running back, and he'll win the job. Yeah, but Akers. It, it is certainly possible. I I I agree completely that Akers is the better running back. This staff has used Madison as a complete backup in the past when they had Dalvin Cook. Uh, this is also uh, you, you talk about adding somebody to fix Chandler. Kevin O'Connell is familiar with, yes, Al with, with Cam, Cam Akers. Akers yes. He pursued Cam Akers because he'd worked with him in L.A. Yeah, so to me, uh, the prescription here for fantasy football players is you're going to hold on to Madison, you're going to hold on to Akers. You're probably going to be not excited and not wanting to play either for a while. But in a couple weeks, hopefully there is clarity to one of them winning the job and the other being relegated to simply a, a, a backup on the on the you know on the depth chart. I Derek think it, you can still play Madison. Like I don't think Akers is playing this week. So if you were already, if you were going to be playing Madison this week, I think it's still the same plan. Which uh, the game this week is a, it's it a should be a up. shootout game. Derek Hint will preview uh, today. I, 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 I will echo Mike there since we disagreed with Mike on his uh, total how much this hurts Madison take. I do think you can play Madison this week. Derek Henry was limited in practice with a toe injury Wednesday, but. First like, time I've like heard anything it. about that. Yeah, that 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 is not good. Um, I will look up their last year's practice reports. I don't remember off the top of my head if they were listing him as injured, you know, as as a specific injury last year when he missed Wednesday practices. This is bad because I think the matchup is just so juicy for him this week. Austin Eckler did not practice on Wednesday. <laughs> Get healthy. Any other thoughts? <laughs> no, I just need him so bad. I uh, I've lost quite a few. I I started. Well, let, with... Let's go, uh, Justice Hill, dealing with turf toe. Yeah, could keep was, him out this week. He was my, he was my Eckler replacement. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, actually, he was my J.K. Dobbins replacement. <laughs> but I lost. Uh, Zach Moss was my Eckler replacement. Oh man. Yeah, I don't have a running back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still win. Uh, Bryce Young missed practice again. Second straight day, ankle injury. Something to watch. They play Seattle. I was picking up the Seattle D anyways. The funny thing here is that I think a backup could be better for their offense. That's often the case with a rookie as they acclimate. So uh, we'll see. Isaiah Pacheco didn't practice. Hamstring injury, something to monitor. Kadarius Toney, wouldn't you know, missed practice with a toe injury. <laughs> And uh, Odell Beckham didn't practice. We'll see if he's available this week. And Saquon officially out for Thursday night. Brandon Ayuk will be a game-time decision for this one. Jason, did you say yesterday you believed he'll probably fight his way onto the field? Um, so I was not listening to you at all. I'm trying to find last year's Derrick Henry practice reports, which apparently is very difficult to find uh, one-year-old practice reports. But why don't you tell me again what the question was? <laughs> I was just asking if Ayuk you thought would be out there tonight. I do think Ayuk will be out there, and, and again, I wouldn't play him. Also, uh, Aaron Jones did not practice. Aaron Jones didn't. Christian so, Watson looked like he might be he, getting yeah, back. Yeah, he was, I think, doing more of an individual drill thing. But, if and again, missing a Wednesday practice because of a lingering hamstring injury is – Not a good it's, sign. It's, it's not a good sign for the weekend. They did say it was a minor hamstring injury when, when it happened, but you might be without him for another week. 
That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Well, let's uh, give Jason a few more minutes to figure these practice reports out. Yeah, I'll out. be back by the end of the show, fellas. <laughs> As we hop into the Tennessee matchup, the Titans, they take on the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Uh, you have a DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cleveland minus three and a half. The over-under is 39 and a half. Gives the Browns about 22 points and the Titans 18. Uh, you have a banged up. Derrick Henry, you have no Nick Chubb anymore for the Browns moving forward, so we'll get to see the Jerome Ford uh, situation. It's a bad, bad week to validate the pickup of Jerome Ford. Bad, bad. And and Burita, it's like all the pickups have just had such bad matchups. I mean, it's pretty – you can be pretty assured Jerome Ford's going to have a bad week. Yeah, the Titans have been great against the running back position. And it's position. been a long time. Multiple years in a row. They pick up right where they left off last year. They they have looked great against running backs. And part of why they are so good at shutting down the running backs, it's not just – like they've got a good rush defense. But part of it is also they've got such a putrid secondary that teams are like, huh, do I want to have a, a hard time running the ball or should we just easily throw on them? And that's that's kind of what the game plan you know uh, plays out. And then you lose Nick Chubb. I think this is going to be a pass-happy oh, approach. I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. Deshaun Watson, I think, is going to have a big game. Yeah, I, I... I've totally softened from the reaction visually of that last game and moved into the matchup phase, and I think this is going to be a good game for Watson. He's going to have to... If he's going to have a good game, he'll have to throw it 60 times. I... <laughs> Because he's completing about half his passes. Well, I will say this. Um, I think he's going to have a good game at home. Deshaun here. Watson looked like straight putrid garbage last week. Justin Fields looked worse. But when you're talking about fantasy versus reality, these are mobile quarterbacks that can put up big games in the right matchup. This is a right matchup. I almost made Deshaun Watson my start of the week. I, I didn't because of how bad he looked, but I still think you you absolutely can play him. Week one against Cincinnati, he was the quarterback five. He still didn't look great, but this matchup is, is very good for him, very good for Amari Cooper, very bad for the running game. Tennessee's rush defense has not allowed a running back to hit 60 rushing yards since week three of last year. Impressive. So that's you're asking Jerome Ford to do a lot in that situation. It's a pass funnel D, and that puts – I mean, Ford can still get it done in the passing game. That puts Elijah Moore on the map with the target share. It puts Amari Cooper uh, squarely in the uh, must-start category, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And then David Njoku haven't liked the involvement over the last two weeks. So I have, in leagues where I took the shot on him or stacked him with Deshaun Watson, I've moved to the Zach Ertz category. I've moved to the Laporta. I've moved to other options. I don't know if you guys are in the same boat. Yeah, I, I think Najoku has proven through two weeks that he's a streaming option. You play him in the right matchups. This matchup isn't bad, so I, I don't, I don't think that you need to move on from Najoku this week. Uh, we, you know, we just talked up the the passing game, and I think Najoku could have a a decent week. Right now, you're you're averaging twelve point seven fantasy points through the first two weeks given up by the Titans at the tight end position. So if that goes mostly to Najoku, that's you'd be very happy with that. It's not an almost upset pick. It's something different, but I think Cleveland crushes Tennessee this week. Really? I really do. Uh, Derrick Henry's banged up. Their defense, to me, Cleveland's defense has impressed me tremendously through two weeks. They lost last week, but it was on the back of two Pittsburgh defensive scores. They're number two in the league in terms of fantasy points given up to quarterbacks. It's 11 points they're giving up. They're number four against fantasy wide receivers, which does not give me confidence. Like, we've watched Ryan Tannehill play football. He looks terrible. We've watched Hopkins. Looks pretty terrible. Uh, the <laughs> Chicka terrible Conquo, Titans. not really. Looks, if, if he doesn't get the big play, yeah. he's invisible. I just don't think they can score this week. So here's my. Do you have a different view? I, I do have a slightly different view. My my counter argument to that would be that last season we saw the Browns really really bad at stopping the run. Now through two weeks they've looked okay, but they played against Najee Harris and they played in a rainy game in week one. So we haven't. I don't think their run D has been tested this year. And if you want to test a run D, you put up King Henry. And you say, hey, Derek, why don't you take the ball 30 times and see if the Cleveland Browns can stop you? They probably can't. And here's something I found out this morning. 
I had no idea. I, I told Mike to double check my work yeah. because it just seemed really surprising. Derrick Henry, four consecutive years, year after year after year after year, has been significantly better on the road than at home. I don't. Uh, it, it's surprising. Usually, you know, you got you you want your running backs and home favorite winning games, but when they go on the road, they give the ball to Derrick Henry. So this is going to be a real test for the Cleveland run D. Yeah, and well, the the toe is going to be something to monitor as well because he's, he's got nine more. Because the <laughs> the snaps have been, you know, we've seen uh, Tajay Spears' involvement. Um, and by the way, I was reading you the numbers for the Browns' defense last year inadvertently, where they were number two against quarterbacks and number four against wideouts. This year, they're number one against quarterbacks. They're giving up seven fantasy points a game to the quarterback position through two weeks and number two against wideouts, just 16 points. So they've been they've been stout, and I think at home, that's just my take. I think they're going to I think I, they're gonna dominate. I could see that. I, I 100% could see them dominate. It's just a matter of Vrabel slash Henry. So are you – Usually surprised. Are you with, – with what we know of the Tennessee defense, they don't give up running back yards. Are you taking all of that fab you invested in Jerome Ford and are you willing or courageous enough to set that down on the bench and play somebody like Zach Moss against Baltimore, play somebody like Javante against Miami or Madison, who you talked about earlier against the Chargers in a high over-under? Because this game, it's got a low over-under. It's yeah. a blarf game, as Mike would say. Yes. I, I, if, if I did the fab dump for Jerome Ford, I imagine I don't have those – options um but yeah I mean, you, you could it, have moss for sure yeah yeah moss is is a possibility it's, I, it's true like usually if you go and look at your leagues someone paid insane amounts to you know everyone went out and put 25 yeah. 35 40 and then there was one person in every league that was like 65 or 85 on ford and the reason they did that is because they have nobody to start so you're probably forced to start him but specific to those other names i would start alexander madison ahead of him this week the Falcons are 2-0, taking on the 1-1 in Detroit Lions in Detroit. Lions are three-point favorites. The over-under is 46-and-a-half. You've got Dan Campbell and the mustache in this one. And the testosterone be flowing. Oh, man. Uh, and Who's going to outwork? <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's going to fight harder? Who wants this win more? Here's what I'm excited about in this matchup, the running backs. I'm excited about the B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, you know, top selections in the draft, rookies with a ton of upside and, and potential. I'm excited to see them on the field, on the same field. Falcons defense, it's been bad against the run. I think this is a huge opportunity for Jameer Gibbs. I don't want to sound like a broken record projecting the breakout for Gibbs, but it should come this week. David Montgomery is going to miss this game. Jameer Gibbs had nine targets last week. That If you repeat the involvement and the progression that you see in Gibbs, it's inevitable you're going to have a big game. And look, at home, with Amon Ra hurting, with no Montgomery, I think we're going to be talking about Jameer Gibbs. So Amon Ra is a really important thing for Gibbs. If you look at where wide receivers are used on the field, you know we talked about this a little bit with the correlation last season between the injuries uh, of the Chargers. Austin Eckler and Keenan Allen really affected one another. When Austin Eckler, you know, misses a game, like last week, Keenan Allen was the wide receiver one. And when Keenan missed games last year, Eckler went bananas with his targets. That's be But it didn't happen with Mike Williams because they're kind of that same timing, route, short, get it out, call this play designed for him. And so if, if Amon Ra is at 75% and they know that, then I do think Gibbs is more involved in the passing game. I mean, you have injuries up and down this offense. Josh Reynolds missed practice with a groin injury. Ah! Amon Ra missed with the toe. Montgomery missed with the thigh. We're building a whole anatomy <laughs> situation here. Okay, so let me ask you this. Sam Laporta, their rookie tight end, or the previous matchup in a good matchup as well, David Njoku? I'll take Laporta. I don't blame you there. He I, I'm going to get five catches from Laporta. I just am hoping that He's got some yards, and he's in the end zone. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't, I don't, I don't blame you. I, I worry That's a little how bit. I would do it. So this will be really interesting to me. My, my worry with the Falcons—they've done such a good job controlling the clock, controlling the plays. Their defense is not a great personnel grouping, but the way that Arthur Smith is handling these 
games, his offense is part of his defense. Like it or not, that's why he wants to run the ball so much, take the, the ball out of the other team's hands, give them fewer scoring opportunities, and he succeeded with it. Now, the Lions last year were so good at stopping the run. And even this year, while they've given up a little bit more than they did last year, it is their strength. You throw on them, it is very, very similar to the Titans. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm just really interested to see uh, if this will hit the over. Yeah, or I mean, I could see it being a lower scoring game and being really depressing. Arthur Smith is stubborn. Arthur Smith is not going to look at the Lions are better at stopping this or stopping that. He's just going to run his game plan, and it always works. And they're always in the game. And Bijan is so good. <laughs> That you can give him the ball in this matchup, and I don't, I don't believe you're going to see a, 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 unless Detroit puts up big, big points early. I don't think you're going to see any kind of game plan change. Desmond Ritter is one of the most annoying players in football to me, <laughs> because I have to give them credit for winning the ball game, and yet when I watch Desmond Ritter, he makes me want to stab my eyes out sometimes. Seven point six percent of his passes are deemed turnover worthy by pro football focus, which is the highest in the NFL. And yet this is like Nick Foles magic. There's only one. He only has one interception. There's no quarterback that I think the ball's been tipped from that isn't tipped <laughs> more than Desmond Ritter. You, are you talking about top 10 fantasy quarterback last week, Desmond oh, Ritter? Oh, please no. Yeah, he was the quarterback 10. Did he throw any touchdowns? Just snuck yeah, in. He Drake. did throw one. He threw a touchdown. The Drake. Oh, to Drake London. Yeah. He also rushed for a touchdown. I I, I don't imagine that you would ever start no, Desmond Ritter, no, no, even no, no, in a two-quarterback no. league. No, not right now. But the matchup is good for all receiving options. So if you're talking about Drake London, if you're talking about... Are, you, <clears throat> are we talking about Mr. Pitts? Confidence. We shouldn't be. <laughs> I, but I think we are. Yeah, we we, we <laughs> eight, are. Eight targets through two weeks. We'll 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 make a bet later or something. Yeah, I'm sure. We will. Um, Drake London bounce back week six for sixty seven last week. Uh, I you know the fact that Vegas has this game at forty six and a half despite all of those variables. It is strange. Did we? Did, it's encouraging to me because you know I I don't think that Detroit's gonna have a problem scoring even with the the fact that they're missing some players. So it's just a matter of whether Bijan goes to work. Did you mention the Detroit is thirty first and. Pass right over expectation, and Atlanta is dead last. As, I mean, this is going to be just uh, it. It could surprise, but I I'm expecting a yawn fest. Really? You yeah. so you take the under there? Yeah, I would. All right, quick break. Back with another matchup. The two and zero oh, division leading. New Orleans Saints take on the Green Bay Packers, who just tied. Yeah, they're tied for the lead. The, the, they're With, division leading. I'm just saying, when it's it's a juggernaut. They couldn't have done anything else to be ahead of the they other. They could team. have scored more points. The Packers are one and one after blowing that game against Atlanta last week. Who we? They did the DK Sportsbook line. Green Bay minus two. The over under is forty two and a half. Uh, when you talk about players that have kind of outperformed the numbers. Jordan Love, we talked about it yesterday on Unsolved Mysteries, 11.6% touchdown rate. That's insane. Uh, I, I want to say that, like, Lamar was around 9 or 8 yeah. on, on his super year. Yeah, the a league average is about, like, 4.6%. But credit where credit is due. He's looked very competent through the first two weeks. This game's at home in Lambeau. The Saints defense is legit. It's going to be a big test for Jordan Love going to be an even bigger one if he doesn't have Jones and Watson back in this game. Jaden Reed's look good. Rookie wide receiver for the Packers through yep. a couple weeks. 34% target per route run in those two games. That's exciting. Uh, I am pretty concerned about a snooze fest in this one. So here, here's something that's surprising. Um, I, like, I like the Green Bay Packers. I like what I've seen this year. I think Jordan Love is going to be legitimate. I believe this team is you know, could could very, very easily win this division, be a playoff team. By the end of the season, we are going to be wanting to start Packers all over the place. I don't think I'm starting a single one. I really don't know wow. any Packer this week that I want to start. I don't want to start Dobbs. I don't want to start 
uh, Jaden Reed off his great game. I'll never start AJ Dillon. You're telling you're telling me your running back team wouldn't be starting AJ Dillon? Okay, my running back team isn't a want. That's not a desire. These are just who exists. That's I mean, yes, I would start AJ Dillon when I currently am trying to start like, Austin Eckler, J.K. Dobbins, and and uh, I'm with you. I'm not yeah. starting a Packer. The Saints defense is very very good. A.J. Dillon is the opposite of that word. It has been very bad, but you've had 16 opportunities both of uh, week one and week two. Seems like Aaron so Jones. 16 times two is 32 yards, I'm guessing. I'm uh, guessing about 32 right, yards. Right around there. 37 right. yards. No, okay. that's his average. Oh, that is his <laughs> average. Okay. <laughs> Wait, was that a correction to the positive? Yeah, so 74 total yards. He's averaging 2.6 yards And he's per not catching attempt. the ball. I mean, he's got three catches on the year and, and picked up 25 yards on those. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying. And I'm, the Saints are good. I'm just I'm laying out the case for Dylan. I'm not excited about it, but the volume will be there and the – that touchdown percentage that we talked about for Jordan Love, that will bounce back and running backs will start scoring for the Packers. So that's that's all you're hoping for is if Are you're you playing, playing AJ Dillon? I mean I'm forced to. Like Jay like who, uh, who, my team who do you have as an option? Can we talk you out of this? No, I don't have another option. Really? You don't? No. AJ, Which league is this? Dynasty? This is League of Record, baby. League oh, of Record? Man. Yeah. You oh, have mercy. no choice? Yeah. Screw them running backs. All they wow. do is bring you pain. You and I should talk trade. I got a couple on my bench you might be interested in. Uh, Jamal Williams expected to miss this game. Kendra Miller's a full practice. Uh, Tony Jones Jr. I th To me, th this is my opinion. I don't think Kendra Miller can take this backfield over in one week off of an injury. I think Tony Jones, the fact that Derek Carr talked about his pass protection, the fact that Miller is a rookie and rookies are generally not trusted in pass protection, I am concerned about like, look, DFS, you want to take the shot that Kendra just breaks something off on the first and second down? We don't know for sure that he's he's playing in this game. We think he is. Yeah, it does uh, appear to be trending that he will be active for this. I mean, he was a full participant in practice on a Wednesday. Uh, so you would expect him to have uh, – he, he'll be active. He will be active this game. Of that, I am fairly confident. I'd put it at 90%. Um, I would agree with you, Andy. He's not going to come in and just get everything. You you don't have the first time you've ever had a rookie step on the field that's, uh, I believe, a third-round rookie pick who missed a lot of, if not almost all, of training camp. He's not going to come in and just be the dude. He is going to come in and be talented. And so I'm going to try to bet a little bit on the talent winning out, having a couple big plays, uh, you know, the explosive nature of, of him, and, and maybe – you see, if the Packers do struggle against this Saints defense, I could see at the end of the game him kind of winning out in the four-minute drill and and getting a lot of work. When I'm, you know, considering whether or not I start Kendra Miller, I, I mean, would you rather start Kendra Miller or A.J. Dillon? A.J. Dillon, Dillon is guaranteed far more work, but he's playing against a really tough defense, and if he doesn't get a touchdown, I mean, right now he's averaging 5.7 fantasy points a game. A.J. Dillon is. And so it's like, yeah, I'd play Kendra Miller if I knew who he was playing. Yeah, I, that's where I lean as well. Just because I want the possibility of being happy today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Like, if you said who's going to score 18-plus fantasy points, yeah. I don't see how Dylan gets there. I agree. But I also understand. I don't see how Kendra Miller gets there. 18? Uh, a 70-yard yeah. touchdown run. Uh, on the other side of the ball, I want to talk a little bit about the, what we're seeing in the passing game. Chris Olave last last week would you say that 11 targets six for 86 was a good game yes yeah. very very good not as good as Kenny Pickett or, or <laughs> George, Pickens, George Pickens but yes that is, that is a good game last week that was good enough for wide receiver 35 yeah which is but, wild but he he's been getting 10 targets 11 targets it's been good man. he has not scored but then you have Michael Thomas and Michael Thomas through two weeks uh kind of getting targeted a lot he is it's he's not, not doing, really helping you for fantasy he, he's a he's a really really strong flex option if you're in a ppr league michael thomas is going to get his uh targets be right around 10 fantasy points and you're just hoping he can follow into the end zone but yeah i mean he, he doesn't have a high ceiling anymore he's not the explosive athlete here that's chris olave Derek carr has one passing touchdown yeah, I mean two that, games. He's going full Matthew Stafford. Yeah, he plan. Has, he has 533 passing yards and one passing touchdown. Olave 
it's going to happen. And that wasn't his fault. That was Olave's fault. That's that's a fair point. Because of uh, the shoe choice. And <laughs> should have been wearing ice skates. <laughs> the my my biggest concern for for Tony and Kendra is Taysom. Where it was sure. nine for seventy five on the ground last week. Yeah, it's not a two headed backfield. Like, it's a three headed backfield. Correct. Like, yeah, that's a good point. Not I'm not I'm not like overly excited to play Taysom Hill as in, in my tight end slot, but it's I'm not I'm not excited to play any of these running backs. I think that like I'm not in on Tony for fantasy purposes. He, he, you have to get a touchdown from Tony Jones for it for you to get anything. Kendra Miller, I guess, is if you're in a deep league and you're forced into it, I'm I'm okay with it. But just remember that Taysom Hill will probably make you sad that you started a running back. Taysom Hill or Sam Laporta? Uh, Laporta, because like because it's either nine for seventy five or five for fifty. In when I get points for catching the ball, yeah. Juwan Johnson's been disappointing. He has super disappointing. He you you need to move on if you took a bet there, but that that's unfortunate. Taysom Hill just keeps. He's a wrench everywhere. Yeah, he hurts Derek Carr because all those snaps sure. he comes running yeah. off the off the field. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, I I'm not expecting big big things in this game. No, I mean you can expect a big thing from Chris Olave. <laughs> That's it. Denver is zero and two, and they take on the two and zero Miami Dolphins in Miami. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Miami minus six and a half. The over under is forty eight and a half. Gotta like that. Uh, that's a that's a high over under gives Miami almost twenty eight points. They've looked really good this year. Uh, maybe the best in the AFC. I think you could argue that. Yeah, I think you could. Denver, Jason, you tweeted something about Russell Wilson. Oh, just how he's awesome. I mean, he's uh, <laughs> right now on the season. He is ahead of uh, Jalen Hurts in fantasy points. He's ahead of Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, fantasy, Josh Allen. Wait. Yeah. Because of that one play. Because of a 50-yard <laughs> Hail Mary. This is why I said, try to trade high on Russell Wilson. So, in the, in this matchup, yeah, Russ is... It's a QB5. Yeah, Russ is... <laughs> Get out of here. He did. Uh, he has five passing touchdowns. Yeah, he does. And, and they, they talked this week about simplifying the offense more. Did you see those comments? I did not. And they said the verbiage was too complicated <laughs> because they were getting late to the line of scrimmage again. But, uh, you know, I saw one of the more frequently dropped players this week has been Samaje Pirine. Uh, I've seen Pirine being swapped, you know, in, in waiver wires. Uh, Javante Williams, where's your confidence level through two weeks? What if It's pretty high for me. Yeah, this is a wonderful, wonderful matchup. Miami is dead last in expected points per rush attempt. Um, so if you're ever going to throw Javante in there with confidence, it's got to be this week. It, is, I mean, it hasn't turned into fantasy points yet, you know, Running back thirty three, running back twenty nine, but it's the 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 amount of work that he's getting because drafting Javante, you are you're, you're always hoping early season I'm gonna he's gonna be ready to go, but he's he's still returning from the catastrophic injury. The fact that he's getting this level of work uh, in the backfield and he's going to get stronger as the season goes along. Very positive vibes. Yeah, I think the, the second half is going to be good, and the next two weeks the matchups say maybe it'll start earlier than expected. So if you want to go and kick the tires on on trading for a player who has been s pretty disappointing so far, n d disappointing in what you hoped, but yeah. actually he's been pretty much exactly what we expected through two weeks, I, I, I would I would go test the waters. Should be a very good game for the Miami offense. That's the way Vegas sees it as well. They're heavy favorites at home. I've heard a lot of criticism from the Broncos fans right now about Vance Joseph's defense, and for good reason. They're 23rd against running backs, 25th against tight ends, 19th against quarterbacks, 20th against wideouts. So they've been a, a bottom-half defense thus far through two weeks, and uh, the opposite can be said about the Miami offense. I mean, Tua is a good start this week. Mostert coming off the big game. You can put him right back out there. And then Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, if Waddell is there, Yep, Waddle is in the concussion protocol as of this moment. We will, I haven't seen a Thursday practice report. If he is missing today, I would my expectation would be that he probably does not play this week. Uh, that's not what I'm seeing, Mike. No, no. Wait, wait, the, the Broncos defense. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said the 
I in my head I thought you were talking about the Dolphins. I gotcha. apologize. No, no, that's okay. Mike was over here throwing some shade yeah. on my numbers. No, I was just like just oh, trying to keep me honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Appreciate my bad. It. Uh, do you mess around with pass catching options on this uh, Russell Wilson train? <laughs> it's the Dolphins. I mean, Cortland Sutton is the best at leading the team in statistics that are not directly corollary to fantasy numbers. Things like routes, right? Targets percentages and stuff like that but jerry judy are you willing to play him after last week i don't think so i i, I mean no no I'm, I'm i want him i'm gonna hold on to him i'm gonna wait and see for this offense to connect and uh, but right now i'm holding on to judy i'm holding on to Sutton. i'm holding on to mims and i'm hoping that clarity emerges and that one of these guys gets in sync I'm hopeful that it's Marvin Mims and that he gets on the field, runs more routes. He obviously had a big game last week, but ran what five or six total yeah. routes. Judy in the or game. or Michael Thomas from the last matchup. I would take Michael Thomas. I'm more confident in him getting ten points. Judy or Drake London. Drake London, great matchup. All right. Uh, Durham Smythe. Durham Dude. Smythe. <laughs> <laughs> Durham Smythe or Durham Smythe. They're all Smythe. Uh, Adam Troutman. That's what I'm saying. It's the Dolphins. Don't play the tight ends, I don't think. It's the Dolphins. The Dolphins have been just egregiously bad against tight ends. This is why we targeted Hunter Henry last week. Well, who are their matchups? Let's think about this. So Hunter Henry. The, you, the had, Chargers. you had week you one. Had Parham. Parham go ham. Yeah. Uh, it, we hoped it was Gerald Everett. So it was, it, touchdowns in both weeks is really what that number was. Both both weeks saw the tight ends. But it's it's not just. It's last year. Last it year. is last year. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, you will have to target Troutman for him to score, though. <laughs> You will. Troutman is, is definitely going to be in a uh, DraftKings lineup or two. I'm not going to pick him up to start him I in can, my home I, league as I just don't want to roster him. I agree with that. Can we talk about a game with an over-under of 54 points? <laughs> oh, oh, can Finally. I? The Los Angeles Chargers at 0-2 take on the Minnesota Vikings, who are 0-2. So, you know, both of those teams had uh, pretty good years last year. Mm -hmm. And one of them's coming out of this game. 0-3. Oh, Out of the playoffs. And with the low <laughs> odds of making the playoffs, yeah. the DK Sportsbook line is Minnesota minus one at home. Wow. Which, I mean, look, if I, the Chargers can lose by one, that's like their dream. I saw uh, Charge. Yes, yeah, it's true. That is that is what's going to happen. Chargers will have a big lead, somehow lose by one. I saw uh, Charge and uh, Minnesota man say that if Minnesota wins this week, they're number one in the division. What? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't vet it because I trust him as a as a you know as the is that the, assuming that as plugged in as possible. Um, like the Packers lose? Well, I don't think that's a plugged in thing as much as looking at the yeah. standings. Yeah, so I it's just that they can be top of the division. This Let me week. go ahead and glance at the standings. I think that's for you. that's probably yeah, the, what the verbiage there was. Is, yeah, the Packers. The Packers. They are, have a chance to be number one yes. in the division after this week after their you know, ter terrible start. Yeah, because Packers are one on one, Lions are one on one. Yeah. If either of those teams win, obviously that wouldn't be the case. But, um, but that is a wild thing to think about. You're own to, you you can win a game and go back to first. Well, Kirk Cousins is the number one quarterback for fantasy right now through two weeks. Justin Jefferson has put up over 150 yards for two consecutive weeks. Jordan Addison is bringing an explosiveness to the offense that they did not have, and it's wheels up in this game. I mean, 28 point or 27 and a half for Minnesota implied point total 26 for the chargers. Both teams have been able to move the ball. I think the only kind of bittersweet thing about this matchup is if we were missing Eckler, because that would only raise the bar for fantasy. Certainly. I, and at this point, I think you have to assume that you will be missing Eckler. That's that is be prepared to be without him. I will be surprised if he's there last week. And I, I did not realize this until moments ago, but last week, Mike Williams, do you know how many targets he had? I, I am not aware. I know he had a really great game. You wouldn't be able to guess. Holy uh, crap. <laughs> okay. I'm going to 13. He had 13 targets. Uh, missed that. He doesn't. Eight he finishes the quarterback or wide receiver 30. Eight for right. 83. 13 eight. targets. That's nothing. Talk to Puka. <laughs> Talk about Pook Nukem. Pook Nukem. Pook. Yes. <laughs> yes, baby. Pook Nukem. Oh. Shout out to the 90s kids. <laughs> yeah, the 90s kids who played Duke Nukem. Pook Nukem. Mm, I love it. Here's 20 targets. He laughs at th 13 targets. He's never had that few in his career. Yeah. That's a fact. I did not know that Mike Williams had that many targets last week. 
That is uh, that's very interesting. Well, eight for eighty. If Mike Williams is eight for eighty three, you're not expecting that he had thirteen targets. No, and and it's just maybe the lack of Eckler really impacted both those guys because Keenan Allen was was dominant. He's been dominant for a while now. What are we doing with Josh Kelly this week? You still play him? Yeah, this is. Do you this play him over Madison? I would probably play yeah. him over Madison because, assuming Eckler is gone, I would play him over Madison because of the depth chart. It was. He he had seventy nine percent of the snaps. His opportunities actually went down from week one, from seventeen to fourteen, and it, it, maybe it's the passing game. I guess week one he only had one target, didn't catch it. Week two he had one target, didn't catch it. So perhaps they just, they don't prefer Joshua Kelly in in that role for the offense. But he's going to get a he'll this, get a bunch of kids. Also, we 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 just talked about Jerome Ford with. The matchup against the Titans, how difficult, how bad you pick them off of, up off of waivers, and you go, man, this sucks. Every time we pick someone up, they're playing a good matchup. That was last week. That was the Tennessee Titans. That's what Joshua Kelly had to play against. Playing against the Minnesota Vikings, I think he'll be fine. Would you play Josh Kelly or Jerome Ford? Josh Kelly. Jo I would be in the Josh Kelly camp as well. That's very close. That's a ma th These are two backups that have been thrust into prominent roles. I'm going to take the one in a better matchup. The backup matchup. The backup matchup. TJ Hawkinson, you play him. He's been great. Yep. Uh, it's it's tough to have confidence in Gerald Everett. He looked good last week. I, I wish no, he'd he get could. more targets, but he, he doesn't. He's you splitting can't. a lot with Parham right now. Yeah, he had uh, three targets in each of the last two weeks, and that's no. You got to bail out, and yeah. the snaps dropped significantly. Well, that's that's disappointing. Forty-one percent of snaps. Yeah, please no. You want to talk about disappointing? Quentin Johnston. First round rookie wide receiver who was really going to help elevate uh, Herbert has been very disappointing. He started week one at 27% of the snaps. Week two went down to 15% of the snaps. Well, I think it was only up to 27 because Mike Williams missed a portion of the game. I think it was getting a concussion check. Mm -hmm. So he, he Quinn was in not, there for he that. He should not be rostered right now in, in, in redraft leagues. I, I, that's it's going to take that's, an injury ahead of him right well, now. Let's, to, let's put it to the test, though, because the, the number one names that are kind of out there that people are dancing around with is stuff like Robert Woods. You'd rather have Robert Woods on your roster than, if than I, Quentin Johnson? If I need someone for my for, sure. for my roster. But like if I'm looking at my starting roster and it's I'm feeling pretty pretty strong about it, then Johnson can be it is on your bench. It's disappointing that, obviously, Josh, Josh Palmer's much higher in the depth chart. He's playing 50%, 60% of snaps. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think and unless it's a luxury addition, you'd probably move it on. It's what we saw from preseason on when they were resting Joshua Palmer, not playing him in the preseason while Quentin Johnson was getting the work. He is clearly behind him. Patriots 0-2 taking on the Jets in New England. This is the uh, – just take the last game and, and inverse the optimism. This game is – How do one these of, teams score? How do these teams score? From what I understand, uh, some of the – prison system will be airing this game uh for as some punishment. of the worst yeah as punishment for some of their worst <laughs> inmates the DraftKings sportsbook line is new england new england minus two and a half but the over under is 37 points that puts new england winning the game like 1917 and no way they score that much you know who the best two plays in this in this game is i sure do and they're great plays defense the jets defense and the <laughs> patriots defense like genuinely I, when i said no way they score 19 or 17 points. Immediately, my brain went, oh, sure they could. Defensive scores will happen in this game. And what, what's what been crazy about the Mac Jones situation is that, and by the way, Zach Wilson, lowest QB rating in the NFL. Surprise, surprise. What? But Mac, <sighs> Mac Jones has thrown yeah. the ball a ton, but Mac Jones is not completing passes down the field. He's completed like one of 11 throws over 20 yards, and they've been ugly. Watching every pass, it's like he goes – there's a matchup I like. I'm just going to launch it and yeah. see what happens. It's, it's not. It's never a situation where he is. I, I don't know. You I, remember when he's yelling at Patricia about mm -hmm. throwing downfield? Maybe yeah. Patricia knew what that meant. I don't. I can't figure out if it's Mac being really bad, which he, it might be, or if it is the fact that his wide receivers have no separation. Like well, he doesn't have one that gets separation. No, Parker's historically just a. Contested catch guy. Yeah, Bourne can separate. A little, but, yeah. I'm just, I mean, if, if you're, but the primary wide receiver is Devontae Parker, and this is a he's a fifty fifty guy. If you had to start one player from both teams, it's going to be 
Ramondre. Yeah. And it's probably, I'm still like, I'm it's still probably going Ramondre. to be Brees Hall. But look, let's be honest here. What happened last week was terrifying. Mm -hmm. for Brees Hall managers and making decisions on starting him. If four carries is in the range of outcomes for Brees Hall and those carries are very unlikely to be on the right side of the 50 based on Zach Wilson, it's concerning. I mean, you're hoping the Jets defense gives him a short field and he can go into the end zone, but look, they're probably going to correct the four carry situation. Yes. The problem is, is it's going to be against the Patriots defense who, if I were the Patriots and Bill Belichick's a smart human being, he's going to stop Brees Hall. That's going to be one of their goals. Do you want to play Brees Hall or... I don't want to play this game. Or Tyler Algier against Detroit. Algier in the matchup with the high over-under. Brees Hall or Damian Pierce against Jackson. I won't make you answer, Jason. Thank you. Brees Hall or Damian Pierce, Andy. <sighs> Damian Pierce, that's Houston Jacksonville? Yes. Houston, and they deleted their offensive line, right? They just don't even put one out there. Correct. I mean, I guess I go, I guess I go Brees Hall from what I saw in the first week, because he did that damage with Zach Wilson in that game too. And Brees, but, but yeah, it's not, it's not exciting. Last right one, now. Brees Hall or Najee? Well, you know my policy there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Jason, you have to answer this then. Uh, that one, uh, that one. My I policy, would... by the way, is that I will never play Najee Harris. Najee's playing against the Raiders. He is. He's getting volume. I have to answer this yes, one. Yes, because he has a policy. <laughs> I can't I can't no, I can't, can't violate the terms of the policy. Yeah, if these fair. two guys were on my roster, I think I put in Brees Hall. Is Garrett Wilson in the category of you just play him, close your eyes, turn away, you know, make a sandwich. Not, don't watch the game. No, I don't. I don't think he is. I don't think he is this week. Um, you know, you talk about Bill Belichick. He usually takes away your number one option. Now, maybe he says, "Well, the number one option is their running game. We want Zach Wilson to throw." And 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 I can see Garrett Wilson having a good game. But you could also make the argument that he's just going to say, "Let's double Garrett Wilson," and they can't. They they will not be able to move the ball. Um, so he is to me someone where you know if if you're telling me. Like you could have the world where you've got Jordan Addison, Mike. You have Jordan Addison I do. and Garrett Wilson. I I would start Jordan Addison over Garrett Wilson in that high over under. There I, are certain yeah. matchups I yes. would be willing to look at, at, at consider, not just auto start, auto lock him in. Now the talent says you can start him any week, but if you have better matchups, then just you gotta you gotta bite the bullet and make the best start. Be courageous. Yeah, Hunter Henry in auto start right now. Yes, he is. Even against the Jets. Yeah, even against the Jets, yep. they haven't been outstanding against. Obviously, they're great defense, but uh, I mean, it's the tight end position. He's, I think they gave up the Fergie touchdown last week. That probably hurt their numbers. Sure, yeah. Buffalo's one and one, and they take on the Washington Commanders in Washington. Buffalo minus six and a half on the road. Over under is forty three and a half, which that's not a high number, but Buffalo's got twenty five implied points. This is not to me a good matchup for Sam Howell and this passing offense because Hal has been pressured at the highest percentage of anybody. I He's you know, holding on to the ball way too long, too. Yeah, he is. He's 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 holding on to the football, and Buffalo is going to bring the pressure, and they're going to do it strategically, and they're going to put him into positions where he's uncomfortable, and I think that's reflected in the game line from DraftKings where you have a you know six-and-a-half-point road favorite here despite the fact that Washington's 2-0. So to me, Vegas says, "Hey, we know that this two and zero is a product of your matchup, not a product of your play right now." Right. John Dotson's been disappointing for some reason. His average depth of target is sitting at nine instead of fifteen from a year ago. What you are know, we doing here? You can. What are we doing, Washington? You can take a much less athletic, less important player and give him an eight out of nine. Don't take a talent like John Dotson and keep him close to the line of scrimmage instead of letting him separate down the field. So this is me talking to Ron, uh, Eric. Sure. You can talk to Ron, too. Uh, yeah, Ron. <laughs> Listen Ron's up. Gonna, Ron, uh, you, you try to talk to Ron, and you know what happens? He gets into this whole altitude discussion with you. <laughs> Big altitude. He starts talking to you about all these studies he's read. And he won. I know! <laughs> uh, no, he won the game because the Broncos are terrible. Can I ask a question to you, Andy, that has nothing to do with Mike? Sure. 
preferred. Who, who has a higher chance at scoring a touchdown this week, A.J. Dillon or Latavius Murray? Latavius Murray. <laughs> There's, no, you said you had no one on your yes. roster other than AJ Dillon. I'm, I am not playing Latavius Murray over Dillon. You do have Christian McCaffrey. I would, I would keep him in the roster. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. Do I we will. have permission to enjoy ourselves if Murray outperforms Dillon? Oh, oh I give yes, I, yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank yes, you, Mike. Yes, you should. <laughs> we'll have a good time, yeah. <laughs> having a good time. Yeah, and good. of course, this is all of. Look, if Aaron Jones is active, uh, Latavius Murray might find his <laughs> way into my lineup. Uh, well. Josh Allen's in your lineup. Excellent. Excellent. James Cook has been great. Yep. So put him in your lineup. The dump offs, they help a lot. Uh Stephon Diggs, yes. Jason mentioned Gabe Davis, hungry for more. He is always a dart throw that might land on the bullseye. Well said. Would you play him over Dotson, Mike? Gabe Davis? Oh, uh Yeah. I would this week. Jason uh, took a moment to dunk on Dalton Kincaid. I do think the breakout is still coming. Six targets I last do week. Too. I really five I really receptions do. last week. Twenty twenty four is going to be a, a wonderful year. Dawson Knox did not practice Wednesday. Oh, for real? I didn't know that. Mm. <laughs> Shoot! No, but it's too late. You already said it. No, he needs a, he, <laughs> Knox. Think, you're you're part of you're part of my team here <laughs> on the uh, on the Kincaid was overdrafted watch. So. Get, well, get healthy. I think Dawson. Laporte and Kincaid are going to average five receptions a game rest of season. Oh, hold on, hold yes. on. We have an update. I agree with you, Andy. And one of them was borderline undrafted in redraft leagues, and the other was drafted way too high. We have an update. Dawson Knox did not practice today. Oh shoot! <laughs> Dag gum it. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Dal Dalton Kincaid is uh, a better play. In play? Yeah, he's in play. Okay. He is. I mean, I look. All right. I I, I was very Dal very very anti Dalton Kincaid in the draft season. Um, you know, I, I don't draft rookie tight ends. I think that that n it never works. That being said, rookie tight ends have good games, and they're they're it, they're just not a season long winner. If you want to say, hey, he's going to be the only guy. Uh, Dawson Knox is out. Dawson Knox has had valuable targets each of the first two weeks. Um, so if those go Dalton Kincaid's way and he gets all of it, I mean, yeah, he's got ten ten targets through two weeks. I think you could. You could throw him in this week. I, and I think there's probably a broader, better discussion to have about this whole rookie tight end narrative where draft season, that's, I think, a, rate, a really good approach to take is look statistically at the, the historicity of the rookie tight end position and whether they perform. But then I think you have to be an independent thinker about the progress of players during the course of the year. And, like, yeah. you look at Detroit, you look at Sam Laporta, he's their starting tight end, he's in on every down. And so at this point in time, you know, and, and Jason's major argument was just the draft cost. Yeah, that Dalton was Kincaid. the problem. But at this point in time, it doesn't matter to me that Laporta's a rookie. It doesn't matter to me that Dalton Kincaid's a rookie. What matters is what is the opportunity they're going to receive this week in this matchup and moving forward. And, um, you know, when I made the joke about Kincaid's performance last week, I didn't even know Knox was missing practice. So I just like six targets. And I, I feel like there's going to be those games where Gabe Davis has a down week and Dalton Kincaid's going to have a big week. So – uh, Logan Thomas missed practice. I look, the concussion was bad. If he's out, Cole Turner should get the passing down snaps with Jesse Bates getting the blocking snaps in that offense. Not the worst thing you can do. The pass rush is going to produce some PPR. Like I'm talking draft Kings. I'm talking, okay. okay. Uh, take a shot at somebody like Cole Turner and draft Kings. Are you staying in the flames with Brian Robinson? Who's an RB three in fantasy? I am. Um, he, his utilization has been good enough to continue. Uh, you, you don't, expect him to have a monster week this week like he would have against the Arizona Cardinals is very predictable um but his volume says yeah he's he's in your lineup we've talked about some real trash running backs all right um anybody else from this matchup that you want to talk about McLaurin in? I mean just you play him okay yeah this one no almost upset there for me either all right I'm uh I'm ready to move on let's let's do it Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. All right, my start of the week at the quarterback position is Kirk Cousins. Uh, now, I'm playing him in, in Dynasty. Mm, I'm, just, you, I'm letting you know. It is a concern. <laughs> it is a statistical concern. But... I love this matchup. Oh, yes. So he's, he's That's at why home. I'm playing him. It's great. He's at home. The Vikings are throwing at a historic rate. 
Um, whether it's first down, second down, third down, we don't hand the ball off. You're not going to have Cam Akers in this game. You're also probably going to give up a ton of points and need to throw the football. Cousins has been rock solid at home. He's averaged 275 and two. Justin Jefferson is going to be great. It's going to be a fun day. Kirk Cousins. Uh, my start of the week at quarterback is Geno Smith, who, look at that. Week two, it was more Thank what we goodness. expected. Thank goodness. We were really, really worried after he lost his tackles mid-game, but it's it's nice when you can game plan knowing that you're going to be without players versus losing them mid-game. He had 328 passing yards, 78% completion rate, two passing touchdowns, added another 20 rushing touchdowns, looked great. And I'm not worried about the Panthers. You look at the Panthers' stats, you go, oh, they, they've been really good against quarterbacks. They've played Desmond Ritter and Derek Carr. I've got Geno ranked as a top 10 quarterback this week at home in a, as six-point favorites. I think you can fire him up. And I've got Dak Prescott taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Yep. Dak, uh, the matchup says they're going to win. They're going to win by a lot. And look, Dak currently third in expected points per drop back. Like Dak is playing very well. Uh, we highlighted that over the last five years, when there is a double-digit favorite, they average about 30 points a game almost 400 yards of offense. So, look, Dak's going to be involved in that. Arizona allowing a first down on 55% of their opponent's completions. That is that is just so outrageous. And it, the, it's, the matchup is there. Since the beginning of 2022, opposing quarterbacks averaged about 20 fantasy points per game against Arizona. My running back start of the week is Fat Thor. Oh, man. Josh Jacobs taking on the Pittsburgh okay. defense. Look, it's been tough sledding for Jacobs so Dancing far. Dancing with the devil here. This was the same story last year. He actually start, This year he started as RB30 and 27. Last year was RB33 and 25. It's been rough for the first two weeks, but I do think it gets better. And Josh Jacobs gets all the work. Uh, this was the rushing leader last year. Maybe it was a little bit of like, could have used some practice. Could have, uh, It wouldn't might have been nice to be in camp. So, uh, usage monster, I think he's going to be good. I think he's going to score right. this week. Yep, I have uh, – first of all, he's an incredible play and will I, – I completely agree he's going to be great. Uh, for my start of the week at running back, I've got Miles Sanders. You might be disappointed with what you have seen the first two weeks from Miles Sanders, <clears throat> but his volume has been there, and I realize that there's a quarterback issue here. You, you don't know necessarily if he's going to have uh, Bryce Young this week, but against Seattle – they're going to rely on him. He's a volume play through two weeks, 24 and 19 opportunities, including 11 targets. That's the second most at the running back position. But he played against Atlanta, who kept the ball away. They played against the Saints and their great run defense. Now he's going up against the Seahawks. They're 25th against running backs at the fantasy position. Um, they've allowed the six most running back fantasy points, four rushing scores so far this year. They were bad against running backs last year. It's carried over. Miles Sanders, if you've got the volume and you've got the matchup, I, I, I'm not sitting him this week. I'm going to say something gross, Jason. It, it's probably better for Miles Sanders if Andy Dalton's the quarterback. Yeah, like this, this is what I'm is, saying. Like the injury, I'm less excited to play worst. Seattle's defense if it's Andy Dalton. Right. Uh, my running back start of the week. Who's playing the Houston Texans? Well, it's Travis Etienne, who has been used completely as a workhorse. Uh, we'll, we'll see if Tank Bigsby gets. And more involved as the season goes, but for now it is Travis Etienne. Texans have allowed six rushing touchdowns last year against the Texans in two games. We're talking 114, 140 total yards for Mr. Travis Etienne, averaging 9.4 yards per carry. It's is going to be fantastic yeah, this, this week. This could be the running back one on yep. the week, and the only reason that Tank Bigsby is going to be possibly more involved this week is because Travis Etienne is going to be sitting the fourth He's quarter tired exhausted. from his three long touchdown runs. Jordan Addison is my wide receiver start of the week, stacking it with Kirk Cousins. The matchup is great. The snaps went up last week. Uh, touchdowns in his first two weeks. This is the passing offense that's going to need to throw the football. I think he's a solid low-end wide receiver two flex option this week. I've got Amari Cooper uh, just as an absolute must-start this week against Tennessee. We love hanging with Mr. Cooper. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Uh, we thought he was going to be out for Monday Night Football. <laughs> you know, all he did was just get ten targets, go seven for ninety. He's at home uh, this week. We already highlighted the matchup earlier on this show. How good it is to pass against the Titans. And at home last year, he averaged ten targets, six for eighty-five, and fifteen fantasy points 
per game. Mari Cooper's locked in. Zay Flowers versus the Colts through two weeks. It is clear this is Mark Andrews and Zay Flowers team. Flowers has seen a target on 34% of Baltimore's first read targets. That's Baltimore. Per, Baltimore. That's, oh, Baltimore's that's per, targets. <laughs> that's per free agency <laughs> points. Uh, but it, it, what I'm saying is, like, the first read is Zay Flowers, and this is a matchup that uh, Calvin Ridley and Zay Jones crushed. Nico Collins, Tank Dell crushed. The Ravens are throwing the ball a lot more, and I look, they're they're heavy home favorites. Zay Flowers is back in a very good spot. All right, Jason, you can skip this one. Uh, tight end start of the week. I'm going with the Muth. I love this. I went to put the Muth in. He was my favorite, like uh, middling tight end start. I just loved it. The Muth is going to get Luth this week against the Raiders. I talked about the fact that uh, I hope so. Pickens. Pickens is an option that they need to turn to in the offense for explosiveness. It's not Allen Robinson or Najee Harris. Friar Muth can get it done. Last week, the Raiders were blitzkrieged by the Bills' tight ends, both of them. And uh, when you put Knox and, and Kincaid together, it was 12 targets, 8 receptions, a touchdown. I think Pat Friar Muth has a huge week. He's running enough routes. The Muth is getting loot this week. And then we'll skip Jay. And then well, Mike. Well, I don't disagree that the Muth – is a good play this week. But you guys, do you know how many yards Fairmuth has on the season through two weeks of football? Oh, I know he had almost none week well, one. Well, who's his quarterback? It's Kenny Pickett. Oh, that's probably going to hurt. Well, I mean, didn't hurt George Pickens last week, eh, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> but do you know? I don't know. I'm excited to find out. I'm a little scared. I can count them on one hand. No! <laughs> Five. Come wow. on. Wow. Come on. Yeah. He the has, Muth is not Luth at all. The Muth has not two yet. receptions for five yards. One was a one-yard touchdown. Oh, man. <laughs> but it has not been. Oh, my call just became much more bold. <laughs> it's, 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 a not great, been Luth. it's a great matchup. And here's the thing with tight ends. Tight ends are. are five yards. <laughs> five yards to two. I love that. You can count them on one hand. Tight ends are one of the positions. Like, we, you know, running backs, you want to target a good matchup. A bad matchup can really be devastating. But you're going to play them through most of them. The tight end position is one where matchups are astoundingly important. Is Some, this the preface? Yes, it this is. is the, yes, it is. You just is caught a on. Disclaimer. Look, I'm supporting your pick because the Raiders are a great. I'm trying to figure out ends. how much money I want to bet you on yours. So go on. All right, we'll go a Benjamin. Yeah, but we got to figure out the 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 line. Oh, here. the line is Zach Ertz versus your player. That's what we'll be. Well, betting. so here, so my start of the week. Yeah, let, better get plan. to it. This week, my start of the week is. Kyle Pitts. But, but Jason, <laughs> you said to drop Kyle Pitts for Zach Ertz. And I would. I regretted saying it because of the matchup this week, but through the course of the season, I would much rather have Zach Ertz and his targets going forward. But this week, if you have Kyle Pitts, and, and I mean every league, like Kyle Pitts isn't on the waivers. Even if he was dropped, he, he's probably been picked up by now already. People have him on the roster. He's extremely talented. The Detroit matchup is as good as it gets for the tight end position. Uh, they they just placed cornerback C.J. Gardner-Johnson on injured reserve. The weakest part of their defense is the middle of their secondary. That's where Kyle Pitts does his little bit of work. <laughs> they have given up the third most fantasy points allowed to the tight end position. The most tight end receiving yards, and it is from the likes of Noah Gray, Blake Bell, Noah Fant, Colby Parkinson, and Will Disley, big Montana. Kyle Pitts can be started this week. Kyle Pitts is going to have a good game, and Andy and I are going to put a Zach Ertz versus yeah. uh, Kyle bet. Pitts $100 bet. Fantasy Oof. points? Is that what we're doing? Are we doing like uh, yeah, we'll fantasy go, points? Yeah, standard league fantasy points. All right. Wait, did you say standard league? Yes, well, yeah, did. it was. You know, no, it's no, standard no, 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 standard no. league fantasy points. No, no. Oh, you didn't say you didn't. The man, first. the man with this, the man with the, the, man with the start of the week. Hey, you has to change the format to get the start. That's I'm not your changing the format. Foot That's clan. standard. It's, Foot clan. It's, it's the default, right? Foot clan. This is the confidence he has in his start of the week. All right, half PPR. Let's go. All right, uh, Mike. Okay. Uh, Yours is scary too. This is I'm just chasing a touchdown right now. If I'm, if I'm streaming off the waiver wire, Jake Ferguson, a.k.a. Fergalicious, to stack with Dak Prescott because he's playing Arizona. 
Uh, since the beginning of last season, the Cardinals allowing eight targets per game to the tight end position. We saw Darren Waller uh, this past week you know, get right against the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, and a why am I chasing a touchdown? Well, Dak Prescott currently has 18 red zone passing attempts on the season. Jake Ferguson has eight red zone targets. That is 45% of Dak Prescott's red zone targets going to Jake Ferguson. That's who he's so far through two weeks. That's who he's looking for when he uh, when he's getting inside the 20. So for a good bet for a touchdown for a player that's probably on your waiver wire, Jake so you're Ferguson. thinking uh, Fergalicious, not Turd Ferguson this week. That's that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. <clears throat> I traveled up north for a cage match henceforth under the wrestling name Leg Brosif. Moving like Cameron Akers, I used the Minnesota backbreaker, powerbombing the Vikings, Greg Joseph. So to rhyme with Joseph, it's not bad. I mean, if we, you're ever gonna get Greg Joseph in there, it's it's, it's the only Brosef. option you got, man. I mean, you rhyme, Joseph. Yeah, that's not. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> allow it. I mean, I don't have. I'm I'm not the one that can regulate this segment anyway. Yeah, but there I is approve. no regulation. I approve. <laughs> All right, that is gonna do it. We got to so, wrap this so one up. We've stupid. got. We've got, uh, well, Mike, we can take it out on him. Wheel of Shame tomorrow. All right. That'll do it for today's episode. More matchups, the fantasy face-off, Wheel of Shame, all coming tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Thank you for listening, tuning in. Leg Brosa. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.